Every state with nuclear weapons needs a nuclear command and control system. This system can serve various functions, including communications and early warning. National leaders need to be able to communicate in order to use nuclear weapons. Additionally, Russia and the United States have sophisticated early warning systems to detect an incoming nuclear attack. Meanwhile, China is developing such a system. High-altitude satellites play critical roles in communications and early warning. Some of these satellites are in geostationary orbit, hovering above the Earth's equator at roughly 36,000 kilometers. Others are in Molniya orbits, where they hang above the northern hemisphere at altitudes approaching 40,000 kilometers before quickly traversing the southern hemisphere. In a conventional war between the United States and China or Russia, one belligerent might deliberately attack an opponent's nuclear command and control satellites if it became convinced that nuclear use had become inevitable. Unintentional threats to these satellites could also arise. Satellites are periodically repositioned to optimize their performance. If repositioning brought a satellite into proximity with one involved in nuclear operations, it could be misconstrued as the start of an attack and hence preparations for nuclear war. The results could be catastrophic. To mitigate this danger, China, Russia, and the United States should agree not to maneuver their satellites within 700 kilometers of another's high-altitude satellite. Occasional exceptions would be permitted because sometimes a satellite must be repositioned and may need to pass through another satellite's keep-out zone. But only one such maneuver should be allowed at any time, and the state conducting the maneuver should be required to notify the owner of the other satellite in advance. Keep-out zones would help reduce nuclear risks. In a conflict between China and the United States, for example, Neither state might intend to attack the other's nuclear command and control satellites. Each would therefore have a clear incentive to respect the keep-out zones around the other satellites. However, it's possible that one state might want to attack its opponent's high-altitude satellites. In this case, keep-out zones would increase the warning time of such an attack and thus reduce escalation pressures. Hopefully, we will never have to live through a deep crisis let alone a war, between the United States and China or Russia. But we should prepare now for such an eventuality so that if it occurs, the result won't be a nuclear war. <laughs>